Hey, this is Triple Jazz, and here we like to learn stuff about art. If this is your first time, it's a pleasure. If this is your second time, welcome back. And if you're a regular, hey, what's up, homie? We're jumping back into Clip Studio Paint EX today to learn some more tips and tricks to speed up your animation workflow. Let's start with vector layers. I use vector layers for three reasons. One, smoother in-betweens. Click the new vector layer icon located directly next to the new layer icon. Pick your favorite lining tool. I really like the Rapidograph brush located in my Clip Studio Paint brushes pack. You can download for free, link in description. Or a slightly modified turnip pin for animated lines that are more consistent in weight and less dynamic looking. Make sure the aliasing is all the way to the left, completely aliased. The option is none. This will come in handy for tip number two. Select the Pinch Line tool located directly above the layer palette when a vector layer is selected. Choose a large radius and make sure the sensitivity is high. You can now gently push and pull the edges of the drawing as needed to fill your tight in-betweens. I found it very helpful in lining my lizard character Slink in the intro. Number two, vector lines make for easy cleanup using the vector eraser to trim intersecting lines. It also has a few other options like just erasing vector points and erasing entire lines. A better way to erase vector lines is to use your desired brush and paint with transparency. Though do note that this is going to create a transparent vector line, so if you try manipulating it, moving it around, it'll be there. You just can't see it. Remember when I mentioned in tip number one that you should use alias brushes? Here's why. Now, coloring is going to be a breeze. Select the animation folder containing your lines and set it to reference. It's the little lighthouse icon. If you need a refresher on folder organization, check out the previous tutorial where I recommend some best practices for organizing layers and folders while animating. Make a new animation folder. I usually call this colors. Make a new frame. Now choose the fill bucket. Disable any expansion. Set the reference mode to reference layer only. Check fill up to vector path. Turn off anti-aliasing and start filling. You'll notice that the colors fill in almost perfectly with only a few pixels missing here and there. Let's take this amazing Ghibli tier anime character I just drew here as an example, and I'll show you how sometimes you need to fill in portions that get missed. I use a mapping pen with no aliasing to finish the job. Voila! Now let's talk about clips. Clips are automatically made whenever a new layer of any kind is made and a timeline exists. Clips will automatically fill the entirety of an existing timeline. If you want to add frames to a clip, be sure to click on Insert Frames under the Timeline palette to add frames to all existing clips. Depending on the complexity of your animation, blank frames may be needed. One solution is to simply reduce the length of a clip to remove that element in the scene. But what if that element slash character needs to come back in the scene at some point? In the past, I would just add a new frame with nothing in it. But this leads to a lack of clarity on the timeline, and you'll have a bunch of blank frames piling up. It doesn't look nice, and you may come back to the animation later, forgetting that this frame is empty or what its purpose is for. A clearer way to handle this is by splitting your clip. If you right-click on a clip and select Split Clip, you'll see a line dividing one clip from the other. You can now extend or contract using the clip handles the length of said clip. So, for example, if you need your character disappearing on frame 43 but reappearing on 74, we're going to split the clip on frame 74 when he returns, and then contract to the previous clip when he disappears at frame 43. You can now see a clear gap in the timeline between these elements. Be sure to split the clip of the folder containing the lines and the colors, not the individual animation folders. This controls the character's entire visibility in one fell swoop. Additionally, clips can be remerged by shift clicking on two of them and selecting merge clips. Lastly, clips can be keyframed individually or together. This is handy if you need a particular element animated differently across the animation. If you split the clip into the desired amount of changes before applying any keyframes, assuming you know where this needs to happen, the keyframes will be unique to the new clips, as you can see in this example. However, if you apply keyframes to the entire clip beforehand and then split them up, the new clips will inherit the original clip's keyframes, seen here. Now 
That's all I have for today. Thanks for checking out the sequel to my previous video, 5 Time Saving Tips for Clip Studio Paint. Well, it was called that, but I changed it for algorithmic purposes, let's be honest. If you learned something new, give it a like. If you didn't learn anything new, but know someone who might benefit, be sure to share it with a friend or in your favorite art discord to help out the other artists out there. Until next time, never stop drawing, my friends.